All right, I am joined by Kobe McKenzie's guardian, Will Truby. Will, how you doing? I'm doing great, RJ. How are you? I'm good, sir. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, there's a lot of folks that are interested in Kobe and his choosing to commit, those sorts of things. First, how do you feel about, well, I, I say how you feel. You told us how you felt. You, you had a really great tweet over the top of Lincoln Riley's traditional eyes. Can you please tell everybody what you said and why you felt that way? Yeah, I just said that those those eyes get really real when they are involve your own kid. Um, you know, you see all the <clears throat> all the college coaches, and this is this is new to us that to be involved in checking out college coaches, you know, tweets that are about recruiting. Um, and so, you know, you see those eyes, and I follow Lincoln Riley for about a year now since we since Kobe's been introduced to the coaching staff there and all that good stuff. Um, and so, so to see those eyes and see those eyes and everybody gets excited about those eyes. And so to see those eyes, when you know, it's for Kobe, like it's really cool. It's one of those things that you don't ever anticipate is going to be a real part of your life. And so when it is, it's a, it's just a kind of a unique and different feeling. I guess it's more than just a, just clicking on the little emoji line on your phone. It's a pretty cool deal. So, one of the things I was fascinated with is I watched his freshman film where he's playing a lot of outside linebacker, even lining up in some slot and, and rushing from there. And he looked like he played a lot more inside linebackers as a sophomore. Is that where he's being recruited? For sure, yeah. That's one thing that, that Coach Odom has really stressed since even before his sophomore season is you know he sees him being more of an inside backer. And that's you know largely because of size. You know Kobe's only 16 years old, and this time last year, obviously, he was only 15. And so when we were going and seeing those guys, you, you don't know what he's going to grow into. Um, Kobe hasn't grown a ton height wise in the last two or three years. He's kind of always been that six two, six three zone, but obviously he's put on some weight just because of, you know, more of a strenuous lifting program when you get to high school sports, um, just a little more, you know, he's going to grow, he's going to, going to grow and mature and, so at his freshman year, you mentioned that he played on the outside, and that's true. Um, Kobe has really great high school coaches, and they did a great job his freshman year of not putting too much on his plate. Um, they kind of told him, go to the wide side of the field, you know, get in the right stance, get a line, and play football. Um, so that was a little bit of an easier job, and they told him during the offseason, you know, we're probably going to move you inside, which means you're going to be having a lot more responsibilities this last you know, Kobe called the defense and got everyone else aligned, um, you know, played that, that kind of that, what I would call being, being my age, kind of that Mike Singletary role where he got everyone where they needed to be. Um, so that was a, that was a big jump for him and something that they just didn't want him to have to do at such a young age. Um, one of coach Odom's kind of the first things he's told us um, when we started this whole recruiting process is I want to get my best players as close to the ball all as possible um you know when kobe lines up at that mic or that wheel backer he can go either direction he can he can scrape and make plays into the boundary he can scrape and make plays to the wide side of the field um when you go to just the wide side of the field a lot you know when he was a freshman later on in the season we found that a lot of teams just ran into the boundary that's a you know it's it's easy to avoid somebody if they're only on one side putting those guys in the middle just like you would do with a with a single high safety or something like that Put your guy in the middle so he can make play left and right all the time. No, it's interesting you brought up that they wanted to bring him along slowly, but I got to tell you, man, he's a sophomore, and you usually don't have your Mike linebacker as your sophomore. But knowing what and him making calls is also tremendous, right? These are all things that are very difficult to learn, and being the football coach on the football field and earning the respect of your teammates is also big. But you mentioned that he's still growing. I mean. My goodness! Well, he's six foot three, two twenty. Like, how much? He's six three, two thirty eight. They, they, they measured what? him just the other day. What? He's six three, two thirty eight. Yes, sir. He's sixteen. <laughs> he's a big dude. He's six three, three two thirty eight. I think in in off season the other day he ran a four seven five forty. Goodness me! All right, first perspective for folks that are listening: Kenneth Murray Jr. is going into the NFL draft, where he's a fringe first round draft pick at six foot two. 240. So, <laughs> God, okay. So, like, the likelihood of him staying an inside linebacker, you think that's that's in stone, or is he going to spin down? 
Yeah, that's a, that's a fair question, and it's something that I don't think any of us know the answer to. Um, obviously, if you can stay here, hype and why that's why this spring, you know, we've we've really committed to him running track. Um, you know, what's the best way to get faster? It's run, and so he, he's going to do that. You know, he's going to stay in the weight room. Um, he's going to get, but no, you make a great point. And I go back to it. I mean, if Kobe gets, if Kobe is 18 years old and he's six foot five and 275, well then, yeah, he's going to have to, you have to do something else. <laughs> and so again, he hasn't gotten taller, um, and weight, I would imagine could be controlled a little bit. Um, so when he gets there and he gets with Tiffany and gets into that, you know, that, um, the nutrition program, they'll, you know, they'll certainly, um, mold him to be whatever size it is they want him to be. No, man, that's, I mean, as he's, right now, I think he's just a tremendous football player, and no, having the knowledge of playing the Mike linebacker position is going to help him wherever he plays on anybody's defense. But I need to ask you, just going back through his timeline, uh, last summer he committed to play football at Texas Tech, reopened his recruitment, has settled on Oklahoma in January. And the thing that I combat the most is people saying, I don't want to get excited about a 2022 commit because it just takes so long. And, and if you're familiar with Oklahoma's recruiting here of late, they had a two-year courtship with a running back and, and a, sure. a, a guy that Kobe put on his back uh, <laughs> that flipped to Alabama. So what, what, if anything, do you have to say about that? So, you know, one thing that I always say is that there's no, there's no um, playbook. There's no recruiting. You're, you know, having a top-end recruit for dummies. And so, you know, last year when Tech, when Tech offered Kobe, I mean, man, you got to realize, Kobe's grown up in Lubbock, Texas, has been to Texas Tech games and has watched Texas Tech games. And man, I went to Texas Tech. Um, you know, it, it's at a, as a 15 year old kid when a school in the town that you grow up in offers you the opportunity to go to school there and play football. It's hard. Um, I will also tell you those those guys, those coaches, Coach Wells, Coach Jost, Coach Patterson, etc. They're phenomenal. They are great, great men um, who you would very gladly hand your son over to um, for his college football career. Um, Whenever Coach Odom reached out to Coach Hayes, a guy named Lee Hayes is one of Kobe's high school coaches who actually coached with Coach Odom at the University of Houston years ago. I think Coach Odom was a strength and conditioning coach back then. Um, he reached out to Coach Hayes and said, hey, man, y'all got a kid, and he's exactly what I want in an inside backer. Um, you know, that's eye-opening. And you don't know, you don't know who's going to come calling. Mm -hmm. Um so when you say, and I, you know, I, obviously we know I read those message boards too, and I understand the hesitancy with getting too excited about a 2022 kid and having been burned, like you said, by, um, by other players in the past. Um, something that I would, <laughs> that I want to stress and I cannot overstress enough is Kobe's relationship with Brian Odom. He thanks the world of coach Odom. Um, his coaches at his high school are very, very similar to Coach Odom, even age-wise and upbringing. Um, Coach Odom does not talk to Kobe in terms of um, illusions of grandeur. He talks to him like a kid that he's already coaching. Um, like I've said, when we go, when we do go visit, we've you know been in Coach Odom's office two or three times, and they sit there and they watch film and talk about run fits and pass drops and things that I get bored to tears listening to, but man, Kobe, you know, you talked about him being the signal caller as a sophomore, man, Kobe is extremely football intelligent. He gets things, he sees things, he understands things. And so when coach Odom is, you know, presses pause and he's seeing where Kenneth Murray is and he'll say, Hey Kobe, where's, where's his run fit right here? And, you know, Kobe will say, you know, weak side, B gap. And I'm like, how do you know that? But it's just, he gets it. And so that's where him and Coach Odom just kind of have that simpatico situation there where they're, you know, it's a, it's, it's where and Coach Odom told him a lot about Kenneth Murray coming and, you know, being there at 630 every morning and they watch film every day and ate breakfast and drank coffee or, and got ready for their day, man. And those things speak to Kobe. Kobe is very, he's very loyal. He's very, um, very, very simple in a good way. Um, you know, family oriented, just Kobe doesn't want, you know, he's, he's not going to show up with an entourage and a grill. He, he wants to go, he wants to work on football and he thinks the world of coach Odom. So coach Odom comes from a small Oklahoma town. Um, coach Grinch is phenomenal. 
And then you got to realize I'm actually driving into Mule Stew, Texas right now as we speak because I'm headed to New Mexico. And that's where Lincoln Riley is. And when we got to meet with Coach Riley um, after the West Virginia game, that was the first time we really sat down and spent good time with Lincoln Riley was, you know, he told us, guys, I, I, get, I know it's literally exactly where you're coming from. Kobe's high school used to be smaller. It's growing. So we used to, used to play against Mule Stew. Um, he said, you know, it, it's just very familiar to Kobe. And, you know, I know – on the side, they talk about those things, but I'm telling you with my own words, Brian Odom is why Kobe wants to go to Oklahoma. Not not solely Coach Odom, but the totality of the situation. But the what when he heard Kenneth Murray speak about Coach Odom after the Peach Bowl, that's when he was sold. I mean, that's when he started started pestering me to let him commit. Was you know, it, people talked about is this going to hurt recruiting when they lost to you know big to LSU. Kobe came home. He didn't mention the score. He didn't mention anything except, did you hear what K-9 said about Coach Odom? And I said, I did. And he said, you know, that's the very first thing he mentioned. Well, that's what this stuff's about. And that's what people don't realize is, is those players spend time with those coaches on January 17th. We see a game on December 28th or whatever, and they're together on January 17th and April 14th and May 16th and every other day. Those are the days that matter. Game days are are 12, 13 times a year. So, um, heck, I don't know where this question started, but that's where that's where I'm confident. And, and one thing Coach Odom um, really stressed to Kobe during this little time where we were debating between committing or not um, was that they're not going anywhere. And I'll also mention that Kobe mentioned to me that Coach Grinch didn't even go interview at Wazoo. And so, you know, that just led him to believe that they're committed to being there which allows him to this early on commit to being there as well. Well, I need to ask you as a parent, you, you, you brought up the idea of actually approaching your, your guardian, your, your, your dude saying, Hey, look, I want to do this. I want to do this. Can I do this? And I don't get to actually have that conversation with people on the other side of recruiting very often about this is a family decision as much as it is the kiddo's decision. I say that parents are undefeated in recruiting. You know, that's my phrase. So, sure. so what was it other than Brian Odom that, that made you feel good about allowing him to just make this declaration two years before most people are going to have that opportunity? Um, you know, one thing that we all know is Oklahoma has amazing facilities. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the football facilities are, are second to none. And I, I guess I really shouldn't say that. I've only been to, to four or five, but they're phenomenal. Um, and the people. I mean, just the, we, I've not encountered a person at Oklahoma that I thought was, you know, ooh. and when you just see the way, you know, Annie Hansen is somebody who really sticks out as somebody who cares and somebody who is, you know, highly involved. And I see, you know, we've been to two games and I see her interactions with the kids who are there on their official visits. I see her interactions um, with the, uh, the existing players and their families. Um, when we went to the West Virginia game, we had asked to, if we had, a, you know, an opportunity to speak to any parents of existing players. And we did, we got to speak to, um, there's a, there's a kid who is a true freshman safety. I think he came from California and mom moved to Norman as well. Yeah, Jeremiah uh, Cradell. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Cradell. That sounds right. And we got to speak to her. We got to talk to bookie that day. Um, that was really cool for Kobe. You got to realize, man, a guy like Bookie is super cool for Kobe to me. I mean, I just, you know, and Kobe someday will get to be super cool for somebody, or for some other high school kid to meet. But, you know, Bookie told him, um, you know, you, you know, he talked to him like a, like a peer, which was really, really cool. That's another thing I want to point out about the people there. Last summer on our very first recruiting trip, I took Kobe and both of my biological sons um, at that point, at that time, age 15 and 12, the four of us drove up there and went to, Meet and and Annie. It was June twenty first last year, I believe. Um, Annie spent the whole day with us. Coach Odom spent the whole day with us. Um, we toured the workout facilities. Um, the offensive linemen were there getting in a air quotation voluntary workout. Um, and um, Benny Wiley had a bunch of the freshmen: um, Spencer Rattler, um, the tight end whose name escapes me. Um, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. um, he had those guys over in the sand pit. And so when Annie walked us over there, it was, it was a Saturday morning, let's say 10, 30, 11 in the morning. It was pretty hot and humid, RJ. And, um, 
Coach Wiley had him over there working hard, and Coach Wiley jumped out of that, like begrudgingly got out of that sand pit with those kids and came over, shook Kobe's hand, and told him, if you don't want to work like this, don't come here. <laughs> and that's the stuff Kobe loves, man. That's If you want to be great, man, you want those people to bring out the greatness in you. And I'll tell you another thing, and this uh, is when we went that day, let's say there were 20, 30 players there, whether that was some of the freshmen who had just gotten there for the summer, um, and then a bunch of the old linemen were there. Every single one of them came over to us, um, gave Kobe a bro hug, shook our hands, and looked us in the eye. And so for me, as a, as a dad, guardian, whatever you want to say, man, that's seeing that maturity in those young men is something that you certainly you know strive to get in your own young man. And so I was very, I was impressed from the jump as far as that went. Annie and Coach Odom showed us all over the campus, drove us around on a on a golf cart, showed us where Kobe will be living, where he'll be working out. You know, just man, it was just first class beginning to end. I called my wife at that point and said, "Hey, this place is incredible. I mean, it is a magical place." And that was June of last year. Um, we went back for the barbecue. Um, my younger boys, I mean, my, my other two boys at that point took a picture with Jalen Hurts. They thought that was super cool. Um, you know, just the, again, I, just like I've said everywhere, everywhere I can talk about it, it's the people. Everywhere you go is going to have a shining helmet and a cool stadium and a, you know, a big weight room. It's the people. And every single person we've encountered at Oklahoma from day one has been as first class and polite and phenomenal as you could possibly be. Last question I had for you, which is my, my favorite to, to give to parents. When did you know? What athletic feat did he perform where you were like, okay, this kid's just a little bit special, a little bit different? <laughs> uh, that's a great question. So I can it, it's an easy one for me to answer too. So Kobe's freshman year, um, since he was a freshman, man, he started out at freshman football practice um, in early August. I'm about midway through – that first couple of weeks, the coach called me and said, hey, I think we're going to move Kobe up to the varsity. And I thought to myself, yeah, man, I'm sure you like, duh, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> he's phenomenal. And so um, we went to play uh, a town. Um, Andrews is, is a really good football program, um, traditionally a good football program. Shad Williams, who played football at Tech in Alabama, from Andrews, really, really great football program. We went down there very first game. It was you know, August 31st, hot as could be staring in the sun and the night before Thursday night before, and you know, it's, it's high school football in Texas first game. It's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> night before Kobe told us, I don't think I'm going to play very much. Um, he said, I know I'm not first, you know, I know I'm not starter. Um, so I don't know if I'm gonna play very much. And I told him, I said, Kobe, they didn't put you on the varsity. You watch the stand there, but I'm gonna tell you that right now. So we go out there and Kobe doesn't start, you know, the game, we have an offensive possession and a defensive possession and then an offensive possession. Kobe trots out there to play outside backer. They call it Rover. Um, <clears throat> on the second defensive possession of the game, they, you know, get a couple of, of chunk plays. They get down to like the, you know, the 10 yard line about to score. Um, they run a little, you know, kind of zone read play action looking deal. And uh, Kobe drops into the flats because, again, he's an outside backer at this point. And they throw it out there to the flats. Kobe tipped it in the air and turned around, ran up under it, caught it, and went 95 yards the other way for a pick six on maybe the third or fourth play of his high school career. And I remember thinking, huh. <laughs> and um, I'm, a, I'm a big softie, so I had big old tears in my eyes. And, you know, it was just a – it was something that kind of is one of those things a little bit like, oh, okay. I mean, that seems pretty – pretty cool um you know he ran all that way and you know kobe at all and you'll you know you guys will get to know him more but what he told us after the game was golly i was burning when he was running 95 yards because he said <laughs> he said my legs see stuff i was burning and so it was just a it was just a really cool deal and it was something that that i think that was the moment that i was like oh this dude's pretty good and so then and i realized you asked for one moment i'm gonna give you a second moment yeah, so the next the very next week rj we play a a larger school, um, a, a Lubbock High School, Coronado High School, um, and they were very, very good. Um, they have a, a top 10 in Texas quarterback who's a 2021 kid. At that point, they had Blair Conright, who was a receiver who signed at TCU. But they were good. 
Um, and so it gets late in the game, and we're down by a touchdown. I don't know the exact score, but we're down by seven. And um, so this is week two after the week before he'd gone for a pick six, and uh, they're running out the clock. They are going to you know, try to run the ball and kill the game. So they run a kind of a, a, a sweep out wide, and Kobe runs out there. And I'm, I, was, I remember thinking, why is he not tackling him? Until I realized he stripped the ball from him. The ball drops on the ground. Kobe picks it up in the pile of people and runs it down to the two and gets tackled by Blair Conright, runs it down to the two, and we scored two plays later and wound up winning in double overtime. So two games in, he's got a pick six in a game we won by two and a scoop and almost score. I like to joke with him and tell him he was tubby and he didn't get all the way there. <laughs> but he had a scoop and almost score that we wound up winning in double overtime. So to be a freshman in high school playing 5A football in Texas – and to have you know, two essentially game-changing plays, two of the first weeks you play, okay. You know, I thought, wow, this, this dude's going to make it. Um, and so those are, those are kind of the first times that I thought, yeah, I think Kobe's pretty good at football. Um, and so that's, that's where we started with that. And, you know, obviously he had some growing pains his, his first year. Um, a few times he tried to shoulder tackle and realized that doesn't work on the varsity. Um, but, you know, he's a freshman, and I really, really, really cannot overstate the credit that his coaches deserve for not pushing him too hard as a freshman. You know, and they, they told us he's going to have some ups and downs. He's going to have some better days and some worse days. Um, you know, so he, for the first five or six weeks of his freshman year, he split reps. I mean, every, he would go, he'd play every other series on defense. And to be fair, that year they, they won 13 straight games. They finished 13-1. and one that year. So they were very, very good. So the kid that he was splitting reps with was obviously a really good player. Uh, but as the playoffs matured and as we got to the games that Matt, you know, that mattered a little more, I noticed he was getting, you know, full, full reps. And so, you know, really credit to his coaches as far as that goes, but he certainly had a, a game changing play in both of his first two games. Is there anything that you wanted to say that I didn't get a chance to ask you? You know, I just, I, I want people who, who listen to you and who, who, care about Oklahoma sports just to know what they're getting with Kobe. Um, Kobe's not a perfect kid. I mean, he, he's not, he could clean his room a little more often. You know, he could, he could do those things. He could keep his bathroom a little cleaner, but man, you're not, you're Kobe's never going to do something foolish and embarrassing. He is, he is smart. He's funny. He's kind. He's yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, sir. No, ma'am. Um, he's respectful. He is, he's a really, really good young man. And again, He's not perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. But he's a he's a really really good kid. Um, he's somebody who will always represent whatever is on the front of his jersey very very well. Right on. That is Will Truby, who is parent guardian for 2022 linebacker Kobe McKenzie. Thank you so much for this. This is a joy, Will. No, RJ, I appreciate you, and and I appreciate the the coverage you give for these kids because. Man, it's really, really cool. I mean, it's obviously something we like. I like to watch people. I like to watch a video and listen to an interview about my kid. It's pretty fun. So we appreciate you as well. Thank you, sir.